Thanks a lot, Wolfgang. So, um, before the coffee break, a few remarks from my side. You will wonder about the title, but I'll uh, introduce that in a second. But before I go though, on, on that, when Wolfgang showed his hype cycle before, actually I was reminded of uh, a very funny thing where, where cloud played a role. My daughter had confirmation uh, this summer, right? And the bishop was giving a speech, obviously, in the church, and he wanted, he was a young bishop, and he wanted to relate a little bit to his audience, young people, right? And uh, how do you relate to young people with music, right? So he was starting saying, okay, there was live music, and then there was uh, compact cassettes, some of us will still remember that, and, and CDs and so on. And he went on and said, well, what does he want with that? And in the end, he said, well, today I have my mobile phone, right? And the cloud is not even on the mobile phone, it's coming from somewhere, it's coming from the cloud. And he compared that with the Holy Ghost, right, in the end. <laughs> so I, I, I thought that was a nice, uh, funny example how you can uh, also talk about the cloud. So this was a very modern bishop, obviously. So um, fun aside, let's go into uh, business here. So technical computing cloud in 14. What are the key questions? Obviously, it's bringing together what's happening on the enterprise cloud with what has been happening on a high performance computing for a long time and make the best out of it. So, enabling the use of HPC is one of the key topics we will talk about here, and I do that a little bit as well. Enabling the cloud infrastructure, I'll have a few remarks on that one. And here, you have your reason for my strange title, the Pell Universe. So HPC, and we, many people here are from the HPC environment, I think, um, they know parallelism is very important to really get application performance from the hardware us and others are providing. That doesn't go away. Michael had that before as well with his training center, and I very welcome this initiative because it's really, really needed to train end users how to extract parallelism. And that is also neither on the cloud. Therefore, my title, the cloud in the parallel universe. So, um, before we have heard a few remarks on uh, the usage models around cloud, here uh, is a little bit of my view. Uh, the thing you should take away from that sl slide is what is really driving uh, the, the, the HPC in the cloud uh, desire to have it, right? Well, it's enabling and expanding access, right? We have heard that before, so I won't uh, uh, go into detail here, but you can have uh, many reasons here. Faster access, industry outreach, we heard about that. Try before you buy, right? You can just test it and, and see whether it actually delivers results you would like to see without buying a machine. People, engineers on workstations, they say, well, I've always used my workstation, but it takes me all night to run that simulation. They can try it. It's not very expensive. They can explain it to their boss, and it really works in the end. And it enables business, it enables more computing. And you see here a few numbers, 11 versus 13 from IDC. Uh, HPC sites using cloud computing, they say it's 23%. Well, you can debate the number, but it's certainly going up. Another driving factor is actually new workloads, data intensive. Um, in the next few days, we'll talk about big data as well and how, how it works with HPC as well. So this is a driving factor for the cloud as well. And the other one we've heard, research support. Michael had uh, a lot on that, so I won't uh, go into detail here. Now, if you look at cloud infrastructure and technical computing, put it very simple, they are a little bit opposite to each other, if you're honest, right? Because all of our HPC old timers, we know, bare metal is there, and you want to squeeze out the last performance drop out of it, if you're honest, right? On the other hand, you have the cloud, everything is virtualized, so you, you don't know that much about your hardware. Now, where's the truth here? The truth is probably variable and sometimes in the middle space here, right? Because you have different ways to solve problems. You have public clouds, which, well, they will deliver you a hardware description as well, like uh, Amazon Web Services does, but it's, it's not as detailed as a private cloud where I know what's behind and I can be very sure that hardware is mine for a while, right? Some people would even argue calling this a cloud, but let's take it into, into this bucket. So you have different uh, things here, uh, like you have a dedicated infiniband solutions usually in, in uh, uh, remote 
clusters, and here you usually have gigabit Ethernet, 10 gigabit Ethernet, maybe. Uh, it's user provisioned. We've heard about that before in the HP speech uh, from Thomas uh, on self service, right? And here it's vendor provisioned, right? So there are a few examples of differences, right? And there are obviously examples in the middle uh, where you can go. And uh, I have one here, which uh, just has recently been done. You can also read about it in the web, with Schrodinger, uh, a life science thing uh, around genomics. And the remarkable thing here is it was done uh, with Amazon Web Services. Uh, cycle computing provided kind of a layer on top of that. And it's really a sizable, very sizable example. It's one on the top end, right? Uh, these guys have been using 50,000 cores, right, to do a really serious job. And they said, well, if I would have had to buy the hardware, I probably wouldn't have done it that size or sm started smaller, and it would have taken me much longer, right? So here's one benefit, which is, uh, in this case, not on the uh, small and medium enterprise side, but it's rather on the big side. So it can be used for that as well, uh, for peak performance which you need, right? So they were able to run uh, 16 million molecule simulations an hour, which they haven't done before, right? And really achieve their target of 1,000 molecules in a target list in a reasonable daytime, right? Eight hours of, of work. So here's one benefit. Now, you will probably wonder why I tell you that. Well, obviously, we are doing something in, in the HPC cloud as well. You've heard me talking here uh, the last few years, so you probably noticed that, yeah, Intel is interested in the HPC cloud, right? So what are we doing, right? Um, so here's one example. Um, it, the cloud is also about, uh, hey, can I reflect the right requirements from end users? Do I actually know the requirements of end users? Here's one the Open Data Center lines where we actually discuss those topics. It's a user forum. Uh, we are just kind of invited in, but we are participating. And one other example, or more on the technology side, I took here is the OpenStack. Uh, it will probably talk about uh, when we talk about technology later on on that one as well. We are contributing. We are a foundation uh, board member here, and we are uh, contributing across uh, many projects since. 10, 11 ish uh, already, right? So, open environments for clouds and OpenStack is obviously an interesting piece of software and configuration uh, which enables a lot of the things we need for a high performance computing as well. It's obviously also for enterprise clouds, not specific. The ecosystem, I had it on the last line of my previous slide, so obviously in the OpenStack and, and the ODCA we work with the ecosystem, but I wanted to spell out a few things here on the ecosystem and things we work with the ecosystem, because that is, I think, very, very important. Uh, you can go here and say, well, we do everything and uh, we know everything. Well, I wouldn't do that, right? Uh, this enabling of the technical computing cloud works only if we work tightly together in open standards, but also on creating very concrete solutions together with the end users. So here's a few examples. Here, uh, Wolfgang will smile, right, uh, because it's his UberCloud experiment, which I think is very uh, useful. Uh, we have been behind that, right, uh, and, and supporting it in several ways, uh, because it really brings out stories to the end users which they can relate to, right? Because what we observe, and maybe I ask a question here, who is really just an end user of technical computing cloud here and is not involved in technology around the cloud or HPC? Raise your hand. <coughs> here you go. That was the reaction I, I expected. There was no hand going up because the end users are not here at such a conference, right? You can argue about that, whether we should have that or not, but it's a fact. Um, you cannot reach the end users with just technology discussion. You have to go like into an event. I was talking with Wim before about uh, events. We have been together and, and also a colleague from HP. Well, they have big events, right? 800 people just talking about ANSYS software, for instance, right? This is where you need to go and get the end user requirements back, and we are doing this. 
The other example has been mentioned before, and there's a complete talk on Fortissimo later on, so I, I will stop here. Uh, but we are a part of that project as well, and it also helps uh, in terms of creating the, the ecosystem. And then, obviously, we work with HP, as you can see us together here for concrete solutions. We are providing technology, they are providing technology and service, and it comes up in a, in a nice solution which you can actually use. And Last but not least, definitely, um, I want to mention the work with ISVs. I touched it before. It's really important that we bring a value proposition to the end users and really address their concerns. And if you talk to the end users, they don't want to hear about how nice is your HPC system or how nice is your cloud system or the combination of that. Maybe they want at a certain point in time, but first of all, they want to hear about, hey, what can I do with this? What is the benefit, right? And this is a key thing uh, we're working on, uh, for instance, with ANSYS, right? Here's one example, which is actually in the Uber Cloud experiment mentioned here. Main reason to look into HPC for, uh, for them is cost, right? Um, Enabling access is another one, we've heard about that. So we work closely also with ANSYS uh, to really be able to enable the cloud. Another example, another software vendor actually, in, the, in a similar space, Altair. Um, we have a relationship with them as well. And I just wanted to give you that example because they were so kind to give me that slide. So it's actually an Altair slide, not mine. But they authorized me to use it uh, as an example, actually, on how such an environment could look like. Right? Because the end user doesn't, first of all, care about cloud or not. They just want a computing platform which works for their problem. And this is the end user view here, right? Ease of access, application integration, they need data management, they need a friendly licensing, right? To enable what they want to do. The solution comes after that, and it's actually something, here are the various models of, of Altair, but the interesting part is in the middle, you say different solutions actually uh, Hyperworks Unlimited is actually a, a, a box they provide uh, bundled together with the software and everything, right? So it's easy access as well, but it's still own hardware. But the other one is here, Hyperworks On Demand Simulation Cloud Suite. Without going into detail, uh, you have to go and uh, get, uh, get that from Altair. But I thought the example is a nice one because they offer the, the breadth of uh, compute resources, including the cloud across the solution. And if some people will remember, three or four years back, I was talking about an ideal environment uh, where the cloud could help, and it, it was going in that direction, right? Saying, okay, I have a problem, I need the problem solved, do I care whether I do it on my own hardware or the cloud? Actually, I don't, right? I just pick the best thing. And this is going in that direction. I'm not, I'm not saying it's done yet, but it's going in the right direction. Now, what are we doing in that space? Well, a little bit of advertisement, you might uh, excuse me. Well, we provide a lot of technology. Again, I don't go into detail here. Obviously, the performance, the engine is very important because without that, no cloud engine will run. And then we have, well, different things in there, storage devices, uh, coprocessors. We've heard that before, that's important. Uh, we have luster file systems, and obviously also software tools for parallelization. Just to give you a few examples and many other things which I even don't have on the slide are important um, from our side to really enable clouds. But it, we're not alone here, we're providing our part, and really the, the key thing is also about working together with the industry, working together with the end users, right, to really get uh, the right solutions. And with that, um, I'm actually uh, drawing to a close. The last slide is just a summary of what I told you, right? Three important areas from our perspective uh, and where we participate, obviously getting the requirements and working on the standards side uh, because without standards everybody do is doing their own thing and that usually works for a while but in the end uh, standards enable uh, a very good environment which works and is very cost uh, and efficient. We have optimized platforms, right? That's important because, well, you need something where this runs on, right? And with HPC, it's always been more uh, decisive on what you run and you want to see what you run on. That's still the case with cloud. We see that from many users. They still want to know what's behind, right? Because, well, parallel universe, you remember that? 
you need to have your uh, programs parallelized, well, you need to see the parallelism to a certain extent also through the cloud. So that's why it's important and also the software and other things around and obviously enabling the ecosystem. Um, I've talked a, a lot about that and uh, that is very important and that's why I appreciate, even if there's no end user here, I appreciate us coming together because as I gather from your answers, you're mostly from the technology or service provider side. Well, we need to do and talk to each other and create this ecosystem for the end users. Thanks a lot.